thousands of T-shirts to choose from. But does it really matter what you buy? Street, just in case you didn't recognize it. The choice on sale is amazing. Colors, designs, big label brands, and really obscure messages. They're all here if you've got the cash. Almost all t-shirts sold here are 100 percent cotton. You know cotton, natural, soft, hard-wearing, breathable. But actually, there are a few problems with cotton production. Cotton grows under particular conditions. The crop needs heat, plentiful water, fertile soil and lots of space. But the experience of one part of the old Soviet Union shows just how destructive a crop it can be. In the 1930s, the Soviet Union turned over vast areas of land to cotton production near the Aral Sea. This is the Aral Sea. It's about the same size as Ireland and bigger than any of the Great Lakes in the US. This is what the Aral Sea looks like today. Almost all of it is now desert and these fishing boats will never float again. The cotton crops are so thirsty for water, they've drained most of the water from the rivers that feed the sea. Salt from the seabed has combined with what's left of tons of chemicals added to help the cotton grow. So it's not just that fishermen have lost their livelihood. Many local people suffer from cancer, TB, kidney problems and birth defects as a result of the toxic dust blowing off the old seabed. The production of cotton on such a huge scale for over 70 years has had a devastating effect on this region. In West Africa, cotton's giving major headaches to small-scale farmers as well. Cotton is particularly prone to insects and disease. The chemicals strong enough to wipe them out are also poisonous to humans, so they need to be handled with great care. These cotton farmers just can't afford the proper masks, goggles, gloves and boots that the manufacturers recommend. It's only the lucky few who can improvise any form of protection. So what's the effect on their health? Spraying the fields makes us suffer from headaches. Our body temperature rises. If you're not careful, you can't go back to work on the farm for many days afterwards. Some of the chemicals are so strong that they affect your eyes with a condition that makes them itch and you get a yellow discharge. When I get a little money, I buy paracetamol, which is the only treatment I can afford. I've often felt so unwell, I've had to go to hospital, where they've put me on a drip for the fever and all the coughing. We've been told that if we don't use protective clothing, such as goggles and Wellington boots, it'll make us ill in the future. But since we can't afford it, we carry on spraying without. At the moment, we are young and healthy, but illness is likely to catch up with us in our old age. Not only do the chemicals make you ill, but they interfere with the body fighting other ailments. A quarter of all agricultural pesticides are used on cotton crops, contributing to the deaths of an estimated 20,000 farmers a year. Knowing how many cotton garments we want to buy, is there any way to avoid clothes which have involved such suffering? But there's an alternative to cotton, a fibre that's completely natural and doesn't require any toxic chemicals. It can be grown easily all over the world, including Britain. And yes, it's a big brother of the marijuana plant. 
But you try to smoke this, you won't get high. You'll just get the worst headache you've ever had. Believe. <laughs> Drew and Gav Lawson run the Hemp Trading Company. It's their mission to promote hemp clothes as the ultimate eco-friendly alternative to cotton. THTC have persuaded lots of hip-hop DJs to wear their T-shirts. They may look cool, but what are they like to wear? I wonder if you could do me a favour and just feel this and tell me what you think of the material. Very nice. I think it's soft. Very soft. Although they go down well in clubs, THTC have had to struggle to get the company off the ground. I want to pick up THTC as well, the health, the health trading company. You go into a bank and ask for finance, they say, OK, what's hemp? And then you say it's related to cannabis plant, and they kind of tend to say, get out of the office. <laughs> really? <laughs> we see the shape. It was made for extremely fat, short people. They've had to scour the globe to get a product fit for the shops. On a ridiculously large T-shirt. When they couldn't find British factories, they went to Romania for their first T-shirts. And you can see here the way the seam twists and come in, comes in. So that was our first couple of seasons of T-shirts. We had a major problem, because as soon as you washed them, there's only so long you can stand there with, with a, a T-shirt that's not cut correctly with um, essentially ugly clothes where you're trying to say to people, but buy it and wear it because it's hemp. And people go, but it's ugly. I don't want to wear it. I love it, but again, I think the lines are too thin on it. I think it needs to be wide. So one of the things that has really helped us is our ability to tie down and really get a design-led company. You have to get fairly close to right. And by that point, you've usually given them a slap. <laughs> <laughs> people will get home and then look in the label and go, oh, it's also made of hemp, or it's also organic, or it's also fair trade. But on the shelves next to the other T-shirts, they go, I like that. It feels good, it looks good, it's got a good design on it. What we're looking at with this uh, screen print company over in the US is a new type of screen printing that um, keeps us in line with our commitment to be as eco as possible. But at the moment, we're in a position of cost versus ethicalness, and um, it's essentially price orientated right now. Um, because we want to compete with our with our inorganic sweatshop produced cotton competitors, and um, we just want the best garment we can. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly all those are small independents. After months of searching the internet for suitable factories, THTC are now sourcing their T-shirts from China, where there's an established hemp industry. Drew and Gav are trusting that there are good working conditions and eco-friendly practices all along the production chain. While Gav gets on with the daily grind of marketing, Drew is out in the Far East, in China, where he's meeting their partners. Got back yesterday and, uh, and feeling the effects today very much. It's now four o'clock in the morning, in central China. Um, what a trip, yeah, it was brilliant. Um, got exactly what I wanted out of it um, and quite a lot more. The photos are a bit higgledy-piggledy, but we've got um, we got a farming family here, and hemp they all like very much. Um, they like because it's organic, because they don't have to use fertilizers, and they don't therefore have a, um, a high expense to get the fertilizers, the herbicides, and so on into the farm. I saw maybe 15 factories while I was out there, all the way from um, from weaving of the yarn up to um, the knitted and woven textiles, and then the factories that um, built the clothes for us. Um, there were a couple of factories I went into that I just thought. The people, the people weren't chatting and laughing, whereas in a lot of some of the factories I went into, there was, there was laughter and banter and um, interaction going on. One of the factories was, um, was much better. I had to take my shoes off, I had to put masks on to go into the factory. And the product that I saw coming out of this factory was, um, was superior to the other products. So um, I do think that we're going to be sourcing a lot more from this particular factory in the future. It's really exciting right now. Very happy that I can say safely that everything that we source is solid and fairly built, that we haven't got any sweatshops going on, that we haven't got any improper trade conditions going on. But just as THTC have established good terms with people in China, they hear of some developments much closer to home, on a farm deep in the English countryside. 
This farm has been growing hemp for several years. Up to now, it's been used for horse bedding and for strengthening car doors. It hasn't been used to make textiles because here, there's been no simple way to break down the stalks and extract the soft fibers inside. Until now. But this new invention can do just that. Gav and Drew are keen to see if long term they could bring their production closer to home. This particular machine is just a prototype, but its Australian inventor thinks it could revolutionise textile production throughout the world. So it'll be a drivable machine? It'll be a drivable machine that harvests and what comes out the back will be ready to go straight into a cotton system. Fantastic. So instead of needing um, specialist machinery to weave the hemp, you can supply it to any cotton mill all over the world. That's right. It's produced in such a way it's very easy to blend. If you want to blend it with something else, like organic cotton mm -hmm. or wool. Wool is another one we've been experimenting with quite a lot. And it's coming out well? Yes, it's beautiful. We've actually spun lamb's wool with hemp in a cotton system. Fantastic. Yeah. Amazingly, Adrian's invention can even turn nettles into a soft, wearable fibre. The trial of this groundbreaking machine was organised by a company called Bioregional. They hope it'll benefit outfits like THTC. Okay. So we'll be working to follow this through, um, make some samples, spin, spinning and weaving, um, hopefully in the UK. We've already been to see some spinners uh, and weavers, and they're really excited about the idea of producing some samples. So maybe that's something we should talk about. Okay, absolutely. Because perhaps they could produce some samples uh, for you, for your, for your T-shirts, so you can get them made in the UK instead of Fantastic. having to get them from UK stuff from China. Or... grown and made. Yeah. So what do the guys make of it? Will it change the way their company works? I would like our energy footprint to be as small as possible. And yeah. so we've always been very committed to to creating the product, growing, processing and selling regionally. That's a big field of hemp. Nice. I predict that we will end up growing within Europe for the European market, within America for the American market and within Asia for the Asian market. We would very much like to prove that you can be a big company because obviously we have desires to be as to sell as much hemp as we can. The more hemp we sell, the more hemp's planted and that's why we got into it in the first place. Could these natural textiles made from hemp, nettles, or even grass take over from cotton in the future? At the moment, you have to search them out in the shops or on the internet. Most of us want to look good for as little as possible, but you know you can wear your heart on your sleeve.